located along the Big River off of Missouri Route 21 in DeSoto. Land for Washington State Park was donated to Missouri in 1932 by a man from St. Louis who chose to remain anonymous. On June 4, 1934, an African-American company of the Civilian Conservation Corps, CCC Company 1743, was sent to the new state park from Lake Contrary in St. Joseph, Missouri. They were the only African-American CCC company in the Missouri State Park system. Over the next few years, the company quarried their own stone and did extensive roadside work, laid stone to the 1,000 Steps Trail on the park's rocky hillside, and built 14 other buildings in the park, including the octagonal-shaped lookout shelter. In 1939, the company was transferred to Mark Twain State Park in Florida, Missouri. Inspired by the Native American petroglyphs on the land, they called their barracks Camp Thunderbird. They carried the theme throughout the park and the buildings they constructed, as well as other stone features of the park. The park's former dining lodge, which now serves as the Thunderbird Lodge store, has an Indian Thunderbird carved into its stone chimney and handmade iron door hinges. There are two National Register of Historic Places sites within the park. The first is the Washington State Park Petroglyph Archaeological Site, which was added to the list on April 3, 1970. The other is the Washington State Park CCC Historic District, which was added to the list on March 4, 1985. This is the Thunderbird Lodge. This was at one time the park's dining hall, but it's now the store. It's sm slightly smaller than the one at Merrimack State Park, but it it's still looks relatively the same on the inside. Now the Thunderbird logo on the front of the building is from the Native American engravements that are in this park. One thing I forgot to mention about the Thunderbird Lodge is that the older pictures of the park can be found on the inside above the fireplace mantle. Whenever you go to these state parks, they have pictures of the park from its past somewhere in the park. Usually it's in the former dining hall, like it is here, but sometimes it's in a separate museum. If you walk along the side of the building, you can see that part of it is built over the local creek. It's just something I'd never seen before. the view from the Rockwood Trailhead. This is a really strange setup because for the trail you have to cross the creek on this bridge and then walk up these steps to this old lodge or whatever this building is behind Here's me. the old building in front of the trailhead. My guess is this is some kind of lodge at one point. So to find the trail you walk up the steps here, walk around the side of the building and there it is. I've heard it's a very steep trail and this is the side of the old lodge. Looks like it's built right into the side of the hill. I'm staying on the Rockwood Trail right now. Makes me wonder what this thing used to be. So here's some information about the Rock Rocky Wood Trail. It takes about six hours to complete the whole thing and is about six miles long. It's a big loop. the trailhead for the Thousand Steps Trail. This leads you up to the scenic overlook. It is in the parking lot of the Thunderbird Lodge, directly across from the trailhead to the Rockywood Trail, which is the extreme version of this. The thing I really like about this trail so far is these little waterfalls that are on the right side. I've barely gone a couple hundred feet and I've already seen three or four of these. So after a while, the trail will sharply make a right turn and lead you to this hill. These stones in front of me are the thousand steps that the trail is named after. They were laid here by the African American CCC company that was here in the 1930s. So they've been here a long time. As the steps get higher up on the hill, you pass by these neat rock formations. That is cool. So now all the trail is going up a hill some of it's flat like this. So there are sections where it's flat and there are sections where it goes up a hill. I like that about this trail where it's not just one big 
climb up a hill. So after about 10, 15 minutes of hiking, you'll come across the CCC observation tower. I didn't expect this to be so early on in the trail. I was expecting to have more of a climb. Here's the view from up here from a great angle of the local farm and the valley below. The river below me is the Big River, which goes through most of Jefferson County and other counties like this one, which is Washington County. This view is also good for bird watching. Right now there's a hawk flying really low in front of me. Here's the observation tower. It may have had a fireplace at one time, I'm not sure, but there's a outline at the bottom that suggests that. These are the stairs out, of, out and in to the shelter. They lead to the Thousand Step Trail. Here is the back of the observation tower. I suspect this was once a fireplace, unless they just built this large stone tower for decoration. So the viewing platform on this observation shelter only goes halfway around. But it does have a great view. To go back to the Thunderbird Lodge where you began, do not make a left over here, continue straight. And then, once you get up here, there's another intersection. Just keep going straight. Don't make a left and go up the hill. And as you descend down the hill, be very careful of the slippery rocks. It may be slippery because it just rained a lot yesterday, but anytime you come here, just be very careful of these rocks because I almost fell on the way up. I'm wearing boots. So you want to be careful walking down because some of the rocks are slanted, some of them are wet, some of them are tucked in the back in the hill, and you never know what they might be like. So you don't want to run, you have to take this slow. The best thing to do is wear boots. That'll give you more traction. And now, we're in the easy part again. This is where I start off at. This is the smooth part. That leads you back to the Thunderbird Lodge. So now, after this point, you don't have to worry about the big boulders. These are the Native American petroglyphs. There's a pavilion for about the information and then right behind it is the walk to the petroglyphs. It's not far at all. You can actually see the shelter protecting the petroglyphs from here. These were created a long time ago and some of the symbols that were found here were carried throughout the park, one of which was the Thunderbird. Above each collection of symbols is a sign that tells what they are. So here is one of the Thunderbirds. If you're having trouble finding it, it's the big uh, triangle shape. There are some more petroglyphs. These ones represent hunting magic, according to the sign. They are turkey tracks, animal skins, and animal and bird representations. As you drive into the park, there's this cool little memorial park to the Korean War veterans. Talk about its history and the 30th parallel, which I didn't know, runs straight through the state of Missouri, including where I'm standing right now. There's also the Washington State Park Interpretive Center. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I'll have to check it out. Probably just some history about the park.
Now this is on the main road to the park, so be careful crossing it, especially with the blind curve. So this is the inside of the interpretive center. All it is is just maps and the park's history. Here's the other side. So you have big window and the entrance door to my left. And then the history sign to my right. So next to the interpretive center are more petroglyphs. Unlike the other ones, I don't see these, but probably just the lighting right now is the reason why I can't see them. Another building built by the CCC at the park is the park's office, which is located directly behind the interpretive center. So this is so far the biggest building I've seen. Down the street from the interpretive center is a restroom facility, which was definitely built by the CCC. Like the other buildings here, it's held up pretty well. Looks like it even has a chimney too. This is the CCC shelter at the park. This is near the park's entrance. It's structured a lot differently than Babbler and Merrimack State Park. I'm guessing all, all the parks are different. Love the wood beams on top. Here's the shelter and the park. This is near the entrance. I'm pretty sure this is the only shelter in the park because it doesn't have a number next to its name. This is the Highway 104 Overlook. Highway 104 is simply the name for the Parks Road. This is different from the other one I showed earlier on the 1000 Step Trail. But both were built by the CCC. This one's a lot smaller, but at the same time a lot easier to access. You can literally just pull right off the road and be right here. There are pictures of this under construction at the Interpretive Center. If you want to look at what it looked like when they were building this. So to get to the overlook at the Highway 104 overlook shelter, you just walk over here. I think a trail runs along the side. It might be the red trail that I showed earlier. I'm not sure. Reminds me a lot of Frenchman's Bluff in Troy. Has a similar view. Now the beach and parking lot in front of me is the Big River Access, which is next to the Thunderbird Lodge. There are other vantage points besides that one. If you walk over here, you can get a much wider view. And you can watch the wind go against the crops down there. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Almost looks like a water. The farm that you could see from the overlook on the Thousand Step Trail is what you see in front of me. It's the same exact farm, just from a different angle. One last thing before I go, this is a really cool retaining wall built onto the park road in front of the Thunderbird Lodge. This is some really good craftsmanship. A little picnic area is right here so you can observe it from here. Here's the culvert that runs underneath the retaining wall. I would imagine this is the same creek that runs underneath the Thunderbird Lodge. It goes really far back. It's an impressive shape for how old it is. This is a circular wall on the retaining wall. I would imagine a tree was here at one point. Unless they put some kind of light post or flower here at one point.